Hello and welcome to the fourth video in the Different Angle 3D tutorial series. In the last video we briefly talked about the controls, icons, buttons, menus and text boxes that you're presented with around the default screen when Blender first opens. In this short video we're moving inside the 3D work area to talk about Blender's Cartesian coordinate system. This is the system that lets you and the computer know where things are within the 3D scene. When you first look into the 3D work area, you see a camera, a cube, a light, all sitting on or just above a grid floor with red and green axis lines. We're looking at the scene from an arbitrary point in 3D space. I'll use this grid and axis lines to help explain how the Cartesian coordinate system works. To help explain this, I'll move the camera to look at the scene from this current viewport point. You can move the camera to the current view by pressing Ctrl, Alt and Zero on the numpad. Looking through the camera, it's repositioned to see a bigger area of the grid, as I'll be using the camera view together with a viewport render to show how the coordinate system works. To help make room, I'll move myself out of the way of the video by pressing zero on the numpad to see the view through the camera. We are now seeing what the camera outputs as a viewport render. As the cube and light are no longer needed, I will delete them. We're left with the grid, the x-axis represented by the red line and the y-axis represented by the green line. I will also add in the z-axis, which is represented by the blue line. Where the three axes cross is the centre of the virtual 3D world, which is known as the world origin. Blender's world, however, isn't the same as the real world. The real world is an oblate spheroid, or a slightly flattened sphere, with its centre roughly around 3,960 miles below our feet. As we're living on the surface of a sphere, the effects of this curved surface can be seen on many structures around the world. The Humber Suspension Bridge is a good example, where the towers, though standing vertically, are still 1.4 inches farther apart at the top than the bottom because of the Earth's curvature. Fortunately, Blender's world is flat, with its centre on the surface. Not because the developers are believers in the Flat Earth Society, but because it keeps the maths much more simple. However, Blender does have to try to recreate real-world units in order to carry out accurate lighting and physics simulation. Therefore, it's always necessary to keep size in mind. To help with this, the default grid is laid out in one meter squares, though it can be adjusted to any size to suit you. Mathematically, everything is positioned from the world origin, which is referenced as X0, Y0 and Z0. As you move away from the world origin along the axis, the X, Y and Z numbers increase relative to the distance. This also holds true along the negative direction of the axis. However, the numbers are represented as increasing minus values. To demonstrate how the movement affects the X, Y and Z values, I will use a wireframe cube positioned with its centre point or object origin, which is a small sphere at the centre of the cube positioned at the world's origin, which is the intersection of the three axis lines X0, Y0, Z0. Moving the cube three metres on the positive Z axis changes the coordinates to X0, Y0, Z3. If we next move the cube 3 metres on the positive Y axis, the coordinates change to X0, Y3, Z3. And finally moving the cube 3 metres on the positive X axis changes the coordinates again, this time to X3, Y3, Z3. By becoming familiar with moving objects numerically along the X, Y and Z axis, it will help improve your awareness 
of the 3D space. Besides moving objects using X, Y and Z coordinates, you can also move objects freely on the screen. We can demonstrate this by adding a new cube, but this time just dragging it diagonally so it sits over the first cube we previously positioned. Though both cubes look as if they are in the same position, they aren't. What has happened is you have moved the cube on a flat plane that runs parallel to the screen, but at the depth of the origin of the object you're moving. If you now rotate the view, you will see that although they initially looked in the same position, they aren't in the same 3D location. Instead, the second cube has stayed fixed to the plane that runs parallel to the camera's original view plane. It's always worth remembering that when you move objects freely on the 3D view, you are moving them parallel to the view or monitor screen at whatever depth the object is in the 3D scene. Fortunately, Blender has included the axis indicator, which gives you an indication of the direction of the global X, Y and Z axis, no matter how the screen is rotated. It also indicates the positive and negative directions of those axes. Freeform modelling of organic models that don't have to be dimensionally accurate can be modelled without considering X, Y and Z numerical position. This can be a very efficient process, but you do need to be able to view the model from more than just one side in order to get the perception of 3D shape. In the next tutorial, we will look at how to customise the 3D workspace so you can have multiple 3D viewports to show front, side and top views of a model at the same time. If you're finding this series of tutorials interesting and useful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video. It will help others to see the video series and mean you get notified when the next video is released. Thank you for watching and see you soon.